Forgive me if I'm wrong about what I'm about to talk about. I don't live in the UK. I don't fully know what it's like to live there. But I see a lot of articles, I see a lot of video footage, and am given an idea of what things are like there. You know, maybe these articles are wrong. Maybe some of these videos are such a rarity that it's not really something that people even think about. But it seems to me that in the UK, police have recently gotten a lot more authoritarian. And this pandemic has just sort of put it in overdrive. It seems that in the UK, authorities can tell people what they can and cannot buy at the grocery store. Crisps, also known here as potato chips, and wine are considered non-essential items. You know, junk food is non-essential items. And police in the UK can demand to look in your shopping bags and fine you based on the things that you have in your shopping bags. Oh, that's non-essential. People aren't allowed to tend to their gardens in their own yards. How does tending to a garden in your own yard hurt anything, especially if you have a mask on? Police have broken down people's front doors while not wearing masks themselves to harass and tell residents that people may have seen them breaking quarantine rules. Yeah, honestly, that shit wouldn't fly very well here in the United States. If that started happening here, there would eventually be an armed insurgency. People take their freedoms very seriously here. Maybe it could fly for a while in some of the major cities here if it was built up to that point, but it certainly wouldn't fly in the South. Yeah, I get it, people need to do their social distancing. Quarantines save lives. But there's a point when it goes too far. There's a point when it's not actually doing anything to achieve the goal of social distancing, or it should be called physical distancing. Look, if things are really as I'm reading in articles and seeing video footage of, I don't think I'd want to live in the UK. I mean, even before this pandemic, police in the UK have, to me, just kind of overstepped their bounds. You know, like coming to people's houses because they said something offensive. I mean, people have even been jailed for saying things that are offensive. Offensive online. And yes, I get it. I mean, I am not the type of person to say those types of things that could be a problem in the first place. And that the only people that should worry are those that are really mean. But, I mean, different people are raised in different ways. It's a lot harder to tame the meanness out of some people and tame the way they carry themselves. And isn't there kind of a moral dilemma in trying to tame people? Either way, it's not a very easy task. I mean, if those people aren't able to say those types of things on places online, I mean, where are they supposed to do it? Where is an acceptable atmosphere where they can converse in peace and not feel stressed out because they're worried that police will get involved? Or do you simply think that some types of non-physical social behavior should just be considered illegal? If so, how early of an age do you think it should be illegal? Should an elementary school kid see juvenile hall because they made fun of someone? I mean, yes, the school should be able to punish the kid, and the website, and if it's a website situation, the, the website should be able to kick the person off at, at the extreme or temporarily take away certain functions from the site over, over doing that because it breaks their code of conduct, right? But to get the law involved? Now, I, I get it. I mean, there are, there are some things, that there, there's exceptions to, to, the, to all this type of thing. There's always exceptions. There are people that call for direct violence. There's, there's things that people do that even here in the United States are considered illegal, right? Things that can be said. Obviously, death threats and uh, rape threats and, uh, you know, I, I know where you live and they can prove it. And they, uh, you know, I, I understand stuff like that. You know, but just someone being mean, it, I just don't think the law should be involved. I disagree with that notion. And come to think of it, taking away people's ability to be non-physically mean in a blatant way will make some people, some, just decide to be very multi-layered in the way that they're mean. So nothing can be done about them being mean 
they just get smarter about it. If the point is to make someone feel like shit about themselves, there are many far more effective ways of making them feel that way that are multi-layered and deep and take a lot of effort. And it can be done in a way that, if broken into smaller pieces, are hard to analyze in a way that doesn't just look like harmless comments, harmless taunts, harmless things being said. Yeah, th those sorts of things wouldn't be able to be a prosecutable offense. And as I'm saying, you know, when, when they're multi-layered about it, it the damage t can be far more greater than if they just said a superficial mean comment. Oh no, they said something about my demographic. I'm so offended, right? I mean, it's just a cheap shot. It doesn't take any effort at all, right? You know, so, so if it's being done for just the, the cheap, easy fun of it, uh, it's going to make some of those people just look to somewhere else for fun. You know, they're not going to want to put a whole bunch of effort into it. They want it to be easy fun. You know, they're not willing to have a potential criminal record because of something they were just doing for the fun of it. So yeah, it'll it'll stop those people. Only the really dedicated would move on to the multi-layered, multi-faceted methods of making someone feel like shit about themselves. But, you know, personally, I just don't think the law should get involved in those types of things. I mean, yes, I know very well what it's like to be bullied. I was the laughing stock of my elementary school. It was to the point where my mother worked out a way that I could go to an out of district school once I got to middle school, you know? You know, in, in elementary school, I had this awful teacher in both fifth and, fifth and sixth grade, and he would join in on the bullying, calling me a sissy, a faggot, a number of other names right in front of the classroom. That was, that was just grand, let me tell you. And let me tell you, I, I have no problem with it being illegal for teachers to bully students. But, uh, you know, a lot of it was the way that I reacted to the bullying uh, by, by anyone. You know, I, I, I... The thing is, I didn't have... I never really had a masculine influence growing up. My dad died when I was four, a brain tumor. So for even, even if I would have somehow gotten some influence at three or four... Some of the things that he was going through to, to physically rehabilitate from things that were done to get rid of the brain tumor. Yeah, even if I could have somehow gotten something from him at three or four years old, I mean, what, what do you remember from before you were four? I've often wondered how much different I would be if I would have had a father or a father figure or just some sort of masculine influence when growing up. I had to rely on the entertainment industry and the advertising industry to essentially tell me what being masculine is. The television certainly isn't a very good teacher of that, is it? Or movies. So when you don't have a very good sense of what being masculine is at home, it's going to be seeked out somewhere else. If the only thing that you're consistently allowed to do is watch TV, then that is where you'll get some of your ideas of basic interaction from. With the internet and smartphones and tablets, things are quite different now. With all the disinformation out there and all these places where people can find really toxic ideas of what being masculine is, you know, that are in the bad boy parts of the internet, and a similar situation on the other side about what being feminine is, it's hard to say how this is going to affect young people. From what I see anymore on TV and movies and commercials, we teach women to be cruel, mean, and to continually exude the Dunning-Kruger effect. And we teach men to have a bad self-esteem. It's a different world from the way that I grew up. I guess I'm old. It kind of creeps up on you. It kind of saddens me to say that, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of old. I'm getting up there. And when you're younger, you think you have all this time. But as you get older, time just... From the way that we remember things and the way that... We look at our possible futures, you know, just with the way that we process those things, time seems to go quicker the older you get. And so it, it, it just sneaks up on you. It's like, how did this happen? Wow, have I went off topic. Well, to get back on topic, you know, I'm basically saying that I don't agree with police cracking down on things that should be none of their business to begin with. And that there just seems to be Based off a lot of articles and video footage and just a number of things, it seems that the UK is becoming 
and how much worse it's become since the pandemic has went in place. I mean, again, I, I understand that, that we need to take a lot of precautions. I'm not trying to say we shouldn't take precautions, but damn it, I, I can't stand this, this notion. I mean, it's like the police officer who gives someone a ticket for going two miles an hour over the speed limit. You know, it's, it's like that in some of these cases. It's just like, you don't, you don't need to go after someone for that, okay? Be, be the nice cop. Don't be the asshole cop who enforces rules for the sake of enforcing rules. Yes, I understand why some rules need to exist. Okay, that's fine. But don't be unreasonable. You know? Try to have an understanding of, of what the person's going through. I mean, giving someone a ticket for buying the wrong kinds of food? Yeah, it's junk food. But whose business is it, is it of yours? And... Once this pandemic is over, are you going to want to give up that freedom to uh, that freedom of the police officers to be able to do things like that? You know, let's let's judge people's diet next, right? Let's tell people that well, the next pandemic is has to do the next pandemic is obe is obesity, and uh, you can't buy those things. You know, let's just take that for instance. If 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 they don't want to drop that power that they've been given recently. You know, it concerns me. It's why I, I look at it and go, wow, I'm glad I'm in the States. Now, it could end up happening here, too. But I, I have a feeling that here in the United States, there would be an armed insurgence eventually over this sort of stuff. People here just, just aren't going to put up with that. But who knows? You know, I'm an old guy. I'm, I'm getting old anyway. And, uh, you know, lots of new people out there and, uh, you know, young people who, who may look at things quite differently. So... You know, but again, you know, maybe I have the wrong idea about what's going on in the UK. You know, I, I might be totally wrong. The information that I've been given might be off. You know, these things, these occurrences might be such a, so rare to find that it's not really an issue. You know, I mean, this, my looking at this could be similar to how some people think that the extremists that you see on some college campuses are some sort of reflection of how young people think now, right? You know, it, it's, it might be something that's just really rare. Who knows, though? You know, who knows? And there's many people that would debate about how much power the, the extremists that you see on college campuses, how much that is infiltrating our culture, you know? How much does that affect our culture? And people can argue about how much that affects our culture, but anyway... I guess I'm, I've said enough, so a banana fungus.